Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Dog Tricks and Sports, helping your doggy live a fulfilling life. We're here with Mindy and Scam from Enjoy Your Dog, and we're looking forward to enjoying some things in order to help our dogs enjoy extra activity. So I'll just hand it right over to Mindy. All right. And Hello. And Scam. Yes. Uh, more important than myself, usually. <laughs> Um, I'm Mindy, so I am working with uh, Enjoy Your Dog as a training facility in Chicagoland area, um, southwest suburbs of Chicago and Downers Grove. So that is where I am from. Um, I have a biology degree, a bachelor's in biology, uh, and then on top of that, I have a whole bunch of animal experience. So between fostering, uh, and working for a shelter, doing a lot of training with the dogs there. And then I've done a lot of zoo work. So I have actually worked with tigers, lions, and bears. Oh my. I have worked with um, chickens, goats, some birds, birds of prey. I've, I've worked with a variety. Um, there's not much that I won't at least attempt to touch. Um, so I've, I've worked with a lot of animal, different animals in, in behavior and, and other forms. So I have five years experience since college working in doggy daycare facilities, which if you don't learn a lot in a doggy daycare facility, then you're not running your group right because they are active and they move and there's a lot of behavior going on there. Um, and then five years of experience working in a couple different vets offices as well. So that is kind of my background. Um, Scamp, who is my co-pilot here, she is going to turn eight tomorrow, um, and she will get a birthday cake, so don't worry. Um, she has four trick titles under her belt through uh, Do More With Your Dog, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a bit. And she is competing in nose work now. So nose work, we'll also talk about in a bit, but she has um, her NW1 or her first nose work title. And then she has an element ribbon in uh, interior searches as well. So we'll talk more about that, but she likes to, she's accomplished. Um, and in two weeks, we're hoping to go get her NW2. So we'll see whether her mama blows it this time or not. This last time I made a I made an oops, I messed her up and we lost the ribbon, but we had a good day. So um, we are going to talk a lot tonight about sports and why we should get our pet dogs into sports, even if you don't care about the ribbons and aren't competing. Um, I didn't really care about the ribbons at all. And then I realized my dog could get them without me trying because we had trained for it already. So there we were. And we started with the trick titles. Um, my main goal with Scamp on getting those ribbons, uh, especially the trick titles, the reason we started them, um, was she is a reactive girl, meaning if she is on leash and she sees another dog, she gets fearful, um, but instead of politely hiding behind me fearful, she's going to take care of that dog herself. So the barking, the lunging, uh, which I think a lot of people see on leash. I talk with a lot of clients about that. Um, and we have so many things we can do to help our reactive dogs to train for that reactivity, but that training can be really stressful for the owner, especially. And we try and keep it less stress on the dog, but there's still stress building there as well. So some of our sports classes are actually a great way, um, and whether you're in a class or working it at home, um, just a really great way to get some of the tension of the uh, training, some of those misbehaviors out of the way and making it fun for the people, right? So I, we spent two years really focusing on reactivity trouble and I felt our relationship starting to fray a little bit because we were so focused on getting that under control um, that, you know, it's really hard then to look at your dog and not just see the problems. So I see this with puppies. If my puppy is a nuthead and misbehaving, I'm dealing with my, I have two 16 month old boys in the house too. Um, and sometimes I have to just step back and go, you know what? You're not just a pain in the butt 16 month old puppy. 
you actually really like to work too. We just have to work on the things that you want to work on and not the problems. So sports can be a great way for us to loosen up. Um, fear and um, getting just some confidence into our dogs, critical thinking skills. So we're going to get to nose work and I'll show you a fun puzzle uh, of scamps to doing nose work. So those are kind of my, my main things, but also just my hyper nuthead pups, um, whether they're actual puppies or older dogs with a lot of energy, can we use our sports as an outlet for some of the behavioral problems? If your dog is digging for trash, trying to find things and make their own games, can we find an outlet for that, okay? So the main one I know a lot of people already know about, I'm not going to go much into it, I'm just gonna to touch on it, is agility, right? So if you've got, uh, if you've ever seen it on TV or been to an agility class, you've got jumps, you've got tunnels, you've got weaves, and it's a lot of impulse control and directional control. So my dog flying at their top speed still needs to be able to slow down enough to follow my direction, right? So that's a great class for my hyperactive dogs, uh, my pointers, my spaniels, my just anything with lots of energy that has a harder time focusing, that can be a great sport. Um, and there are places like ourselves, um, like Enjoy Your Dog, that do it for fun. So when I teach it, I don't compete in agility. Um, so I don't teach to compete in agility. That wouldn't really be fair because I don't know much about the competition world of agility, but we use it as a confidence builder and we use it as a puppy calm down <laughs> um, and outlet for some of the crazy, right? Um, so agility is great. I love it. I think a lot of people already know about it, so I'm not going to focus on it tonight. Um, my next one that I absolutely love, come here, and this is one of my favorite classes to teach, is urban agility or dog parkour, okay? So um, if you know human parkour is jumping around on buildings and doing things that look sketchy to me, uh, we kind of make a dog version of that that is very focused on safety, um, but a lot of fun for the dogs. And the difference really between your agility and your urban agility. In agility, if a dog, if you point towards a jump, the dog knows there's one thing to do, you jump over that jump. If you point to a tunnel, they go through the tunnel. In urban agility, and I'm going to pull some stuff out here in a moment, we've got a chair, and I have six different things your dog can do with that chair. So as you both approach that chair, you need to be communicating well enough for them to go, oh, you want me to go under the chair or around the chair, right? So there's a lot of um, differentiation versus in agility, it's more directional control um, and taking cues from a distance. Uh, so that's kind of your difference between your agilities. I am going to back my camera up a bit so you can see it a little bit better. Much bigger area. And we're gonna play with the chair. And this that kiddo. All right, that looks good for seeing. So two really basic moves would be, can you put two feet up on something? Good girl, thank you. Very nice. Versus, can you go all the way up on something? Scam up. Yes, nicely done. Come here. She can actually do two up there as well. Um, and this is where your safety comes in. Scamp is a small enough dog that she's not going to push this, and her center of gravity is back a little bit, so she's not going to push the chair over. But I'm always right here to catch that chair if it's going to fall, right? Off. Good girl. No, not the bowl of food. Thank you. Um, so we do two paws up. We do four paws up. And I start with luring, right? So my cookie on my dog's nose. And I'm just going to lure them up. Yes. And I'm going to mark it with a yes. Or if you use a clicker, that's great. I'm just going to say, make it sure they know exactly what they're good, what it was good for, right? Two paws. Yes. And there we go. Right? Now, scamp. Um, is very, very good at urban, so she knows she knows the parkour moves. Oh, good girl, and she's going to up. There you go, off. You can do it, off. Good girl, thank you. All right, so those are two of my, my kind of my urban moves. 
Um, two more that are fun to kind of differentiate is can they go under versus around, right? So if we can go around and cookie on nose and I'm just gonna lure her around, yes, and treat as she comes back, right? As they get good with that lure, oh no, not quite. So I'm just gonna lure her off. She didn't quite get it right. It's not a bad thing. It just is what it is. Yes, good girl. And for Scant, she's not used to me luring that anymore. She actually just goes around. That's why she was jumping up. She's like, what are you doing with that cookie in your hand, ma'am? I know. Okay, so for me, my signal for around is a hand flip um, and a foot. So I step into the object and a hand flip. Yes, good girl. Use the word around if I want. Ready? Great job, my little nugget. Yeah. For under, can we do an under, right? And keep in mind, Scamp is trained on some of these things. Um, but this way, again, the concept of this sport, if I approach a chair, then she knows or, or should be able to look at me, slow her mind down a little bit um, and look at me and say, okay, what is she trying to get me to do? And I need to be clear enough with my cue as to what it is I want, right? So this game, really does take some slowing down and a lot of mental work for your dog. It's a really good puzzle. Um, and as long as you don't get stuck in doing patterns of things, because um, they will after the third or fourth time you do the same set of things over and over again, they'll know what you're going for. So you want to bounce it around a little bit. Keep them guessing, right? Um, there is that. I'm going to pull out a stool and show you one of her more exciting tricks if she'll do it. But the stool, same thing. You can use things from your home, which is what I love about this. You can go out to the woods and play with a, you know, logs. Um, can they go two paws or four paws on a log? If it's a fallen log, can they go under the log, around the log, over the log? So many things you can do with a simple fallen tree, right? Um, and the same thing on a stool. Can we go up? Can we go up to the second level? Princess here isn't quite tall enough to go up to that third level. You go back down. There you go. Good. Off. Great job. Yeah, she's trying her harder one. Let's see. Can you get your back feet up there? You see her working it. Yes. Good girl. That is her hardest one with this stool because she's just a tad too short. Um, and Scamp actually has bad knees. What I love about parkour is you can actually use it to, to um, help them build muscle in those knees. So my vet actually at one point was like, well, her knees luxate. I can feel the, they're not formed right, but there's so much muscle in there holding it together that they don't actually pop it in out. And I went, yes, that's because I've been exercising with her, right? So this is kind of where Scamp's good knees come from. And it has saved us lots of money in surgeries. Very important to me. So same thing, can you go around? Oh no, and if she makes that mistake and goes under, I'm just gonna touch. Good girl, come here. Can you go around? Oh no, you had it this afternoon and you lost it, haven't you? Um, good girl, good job. So I think you can kind of see the point on that, okay? Um, Easy way to start some of this at home. Again, a lot of this is exercise building, knee build up, building up their ability to target something with their feet. Um, the way Scamp learns that backup maneuver was actually these balance pods right here. Can you simply target that with your feet, right? Um, so she's big on putting her front feet on here. If I walked away, she would stay here for hours because I've worked on her being so magnetized to these things. She loves them, um, which is really nice for me. We go feet. And we've also worked on getting those feet up. Stay. So these balance pods are actually, they're really pretty cheap. I think I got these set of two for 20 uh, or 30 on Amazon. And if you look up just balance pod, you're going to get big ones. You're going to get small ones. Um, get the bigger ones. And they're for people. So there are dog ones, good girl. 
there are dog ones that they cost like $75. Now they're cute and they're shaped up a bone, but I don't think that's necessary, right? Um, I'll save my money and I'll use these nice human ones instead. Good. Back up. So just practicing can my dog the first time off. I might let them eat off the pod so that they're comfy with it. And then can I simply put that food on the nose and lure them front feet and then back feet. Free. Okay. So that's a really nice, easy way to start. You can use the balance pods. You can use a pillow. You can use a dog bed. You can use um, anything, right? There's, there's really no limit to what you can have them start to target their feet on. And what you want to do is once they get up on it and they're comfy getting up, is just reward like crazy. Okay. So that is really fun area there. Um, Parkour, you can do online uh, titles, which is great. You basically go out and video yourself doing these things, read the rules on it first so that you're videoing the right thing. So there's a few weird kind of things in there. Um, and as you're videoing it, it's lots of fun. Come home, cut those videos down and send them to um, the website to look that up is International Dog Parkour Association. Um, great place. They go through a lot of safety procedures. If you've got your dog going on trees and logs, I typically do a harness with a back clip on it so that I, if I've got the leash on that, I can hold her and support her on the way down. Um, again, with three bad legs, I don't really want her landing heavily from higher heights. So it's they do focus a lot on safety and you will get knocked uh, and your video will not pass if you're not following the safety guidelines, um, which I appreciate because I've you know already got a three-legged, broken three-leg dog. I, I, she's got four legs, but three of them are broken is what I'm trying to say there. Um, so I like to make sure that we can kind of focus on all of that. I'm gonna pause for a moment because that is, kind of one sport that I wanted to talk about. Do we have any questions at this point? I was wondering what you recommend as rewards as you're going through the training process. Sure, yeah. Um, so you've got a lot of different options. I will say because Scamp has a tendency to gain weight. And again, she's got three bad legs. I keep her on the trim side, but we train a lot because she loves it. Um, so she actually tonight is working for a brand of kibble that is baked. Um, this is Lotus and it works really nicely. I've got a few training treats that are just bags of training treats. I like things that like this is a single ingredient treat. Um, so this is just beef liver. They also have a turkey liver and pork liver and um, whatever other animals you like. You can make <laughs> liver of it. Um, so I use a lot of stuff. I will also do, instead of feeding her her dinner, this is her dinner, basically. Um, I will use chicken, like just baked chicken, shred that up and you can shred it into teeny pieces. And that way, if your dog is 35 pounds, if your dog is 10 pounds, if your dog is 100 pounds, you can kind of vary the size. Um, the more distraction or the, the more my dog may have issue with what we're doing. So Scamp really doesn't like things that move under her feet. If I'm gonna play on a wobbly object, which we do, because it's really good for her knees. Um, if I'm gonna do that, we are definitely going to use like chicken. Um, I might pull out the hot dogs for that, not as healthy, but sometimes it's worth it, right? So it kind of depends on, I, I know some dogs will work for their own kibble and it's really easy. Some dogs you've got to pull out the big guns. So you can use a lot of different stuff though. I use mostly real food. I, I mostly use chicken and cheese and hamburger. And if we're making meat, the dogs are getting some too. So yes, any other questions? And feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question. And you can always ask questions at the end or anytime during just, you know, I like to pause. Yeah, I'm good a lot right of information. Now. Oh, sorry. Go it ahead. is. It but is. I'm good right now. Okay. 
All righty. So that is urban agility and parkour, which I credit for Scamp's lack of knee surgery. Um, one leg surgery is plenty, so we're going to avoid the rest of it. You are sitting weird. What are your legs doing, Plopped? You're weird. Yes. Um, all right. The next one I want to talk about is just tricks. And there are trick titles that you can get. Um, and the company I like to go through is Do More With Your Dog. Um, there's a lot of places you can get trick titles, or, or quite a few anyway. They're, they're becoming more popular. Um, the AKC, I know, does them. You can do a lot of them offer it. Um, but I like Do More With Your Dog. It's, uh, it's very variety, um, and there's some really nice kind of leveling. So even my puppies, that have just kind of barely touched on some of the basics, you could fairly easily get a novice level trick title with a puppy. Um, and for this one, if you look up Do More With Your Dog and you want to get a title, my boss who owns Enjoy Your Dog, her name is Pam, she's fantastic. She actually can do the titling if you send her videos of your dogs doing the tricks. So that is definitely an option. Um, I don't know the trainers up in Michigan. So that's my, my, I have a hard time recommending like people to go to. So I, don't, I don't know. I know trainers in many different states, but Michigan's not one of them for some reason. So um, I'll have to do a little more research on, on Michigan trainers. But for tricks tonight, um, I was going to look at, what do you think? I was going to look at the spin. Okay. Spin is a great one. And spin actually going back for a second to my parkour is really good spinal stretch for dogs. Hey, leave it. Now listen here. We've made it almost the whole thing without you stealing food. And here we go. Come here. All right. So we're going to ask her to stand. Okay. Thank you. And cookie on nose. And we just bring it towards the shoulder. Yes. As they get more than halfway around, that's when I say yes. And I feed them when they get back to me. So as I go with it, yes. And I treat, right? Nice and easy. Um, if your dog isn't going one direction, try the other way. Dogs actually um, usually have a side they prefer, very much like being right or left-handed. Um, and a lot of dogs will go one way. And then once they learn their easier way, it's easier to teach them the opposite direction. So stamp, stamp. I actually know spin versus twist. So she goes spin. Good girl, thank you. Very happy to eat for food and twist. Good. Very nice. And this is a differentiation thing, right? If I make my signals really small, which I haven't worked enough to shorten those signals, you'll notice I, I use a pretty decent sized hand signal for that still. But if I work it smaller, I want to make sure that my dog can read that hand gesture, right? So you can use a circle one way, circle the other. For scamp, when we were learning it, for whatever reason, she couldn't differentiate that. If I did it this way, she would spin. If I tried to do just a single finger and go the opposite direction, she would spin the wrong way. She wouldn't do it the other way. So for her, I actually use this where my fingers are just curled. I don't know why. Probably because I was holding a cookie in those hands, in those fingers. And I would come on, stand. And I just wore her around. Yes, good girl. Um, so just making sure if you're having a hard time with it, that your signaling is clear, right? And for whatever reason, most dogs get it. She gets most of my hand signals. And for whatever reason, a spin this way versus a spin this way did not work for her. So I had to actually change my hand orientation fully, um, to get her to go in a circle. So... That is your spin, right? And that one you want to train enough. I train sitting down right now because I'm in the camera then. Uh, but you want to train sitting, standing. Uh, you want to you want to train it in whatever scenarios you're going to use it, right? So I oftentimes am training on the floor, but if I'm teaching classes, I'm usually standing up. So she needs to know how to do it with me in both positions. Okay. The other one I wanted to talk about tonight for tricks is one I've been working on with her. This one I like because it's kind of a fun add-on to a stay, right? So if you've been working stays with your dogs in a more obedience type setting, where you're doing sit stays and down stays, maybe stand stays, this one, can you back up? 
can create them. Yeah. This one is more of a, um, a change to that down, right? What I do is bang, it's play dead, right? I do it on their side and I can lure with that cookie towards their shoulder. Yes, and as soon as they flop that elbow um, to the ground, so that shoulder's on the ground, their head might be up, it might look kind of like that. Or it might look like that where they've just got their hips rolled, right? So they start out straight, we roll those hips, and I'm gonna roll her over some more. There you go, good girl. She's been doing this for a while, so it's, she doesn't stop midway and let you see it. Um, but as we do this, you can see she's holding it. I can reward her for that, and then I'm just gonna let her know when she's allowed up, just like I do with my stays. I use the word free, and free means you're allowed up. So if I do a sit, stay, sit, good draw, cookie, free. There you go, she knows she's allowed up. We do that enough in a sit and a down stay that this actually comes very quick. We go down, good. And she knows she's supposed to stay. I can put cookies on the floor. That took a little bit. Sometimes I have to cover them, right? Took a little bit, free. Good girl, and she knows she can get it. Right? Um, that one, I'm actually in the process down. She will not roll the other way, which is why I'm having her roll into me, because I know there's no chance of her rolling the other way. Is there? Oh, maybe there is. Oh, she's making a liar out of me. All right, but you can see middle position here. She's not going to flip over as well. Yes, good. Oh, he's making a liar out of you, mama. Good girl. You see, she's not as comfy staying in that on the other side, on her left side. She likes her right side on the floor. So that's key too, just like I said, the spin. Back up, go down, good. So if I get her, good, stay, okay. I like to have that cookie on the floor because it gives them something to focus on. So if you've worked on leave it, if not, you may have to do that first to get to this. Okay, but can I touch? I can touch, that's beautiful. Can I lift a foot? Good, I might slip her a cookie, but she's still there because I haven't said that magical F word yet. That came out weird, but I promise I mean uh, a different F word. Um, but can I toy with you? Are you really dead? Yeah, she's pretty dead, look at that. She's pretty dead. And I have been adding a word to her, so not just that F word will let her up, but if I go, head down. There you go. Clear. Then she can get up and I've made her alive again, right? So that's kind of a fun trick. A fun one, huh? Um, any questions on those two tricks before I go anywhere else? I know that's a lot of info all in one. one it's kind of backtracking for the trick part, but like, how do you get her to stay so well? Yeah, so I... One, I did a lot of, can we, pretending she's a nuthead puppy, can we lure into that sit? Yes, good, okay. And I actually like to start, instead of playing that sit and free, um, I actually start with a game called Zen Cookie. And that, I just take my cookie, I hold it up, and if my puppy's boinging and springing around, my cookie stays up, and I kind of ignore them. And as soon as they get their butt to the ground, my hand starts going down nice and easy and right into their mouth. If they get up and I'm on my way down, I'm not gonna jerk because you know that'll get them bouncing some more, right? It's fun to chase that. But I will simply just reverse. If I'm going slowly down, I'm gonna go slowly right back up again. Good girl. Um, I also, I, I take that kind of slowly. So, Scamp is in a sit stay right now. I'm just gonna really easy kind of treat. Why are you avoiding looking at the treat? Do you not trust yourself? Yeah. And I can do the same in a down. Good. So if I get her into that down, I can reward the down and I can just slow treat that down. And it just adds a bit of patience to it. Um, and keep in mind, Scamp has been working on her stays since she was eight weeks old and now she's about eight years. So. She's been working it for a long time. Uh, her 16-month-old brothers, 
there's a reason they're not doing the seminar with me. They don't look like this, right? Um, they're, they try very, very hard, but they don't sit still for long. So it's, uh, with her, it's really easy. Cam is also a lazy dog, just naturally. So she was really easy to teach a stay to. Um, but it's a, it's a lot of practicing just that, can I slowly get the cookie in? And then if you're adding it to tricks, well, bang, good girl. Right, we already know slow cookie, you don't go grab it, I'm gonna give it to you. So at first I may just leave her right here and I'm not gonna touch, I'm not gonna add any other distractions. And then I'm just gonna slowly bring that cookie to her. So you can play this in most positions, as long as your dog can eat, um, you can play it. So right now I'm teaching Jake, my puppy, how to do a stand and a stay. Free. Um, because he, he sits and I want him to stand for most of his tricks. So I've just been luring him from the sit into a stand and then cookieing and slow cookieing that. And if we move forward, stay. If we move forward, my cookie backs up. So you may have caught me do that with scamp. So if she moves forward, the cookie backs up. If those feet stay still, the cookie comes to her. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's like even with a dog that might have already learned these things, it's like finding if they're not sticking to it, a yeah. different technique to remind them this is what this is. Yeah, for sure. And I do, I, I trainers have so many different ways to train everything. So I, I do find sometimes what I'm using and then the people go to, we have, I think, nine trainers at the moment with Enjoy Your Dog. So they'll take a class with me. And then the next class, they'll wind up with another trainer. And for whatever reason, what I was saying or my method wasn't quite working, but theirs does. And we all train very similarly. It's all the same concept, but we have these little tweaks, right? So I find that a lot. Somebody will go to another trainer and they'll come to my class. But I have never been able to do a stay. Okay, let's try it and see if the Zen cookie works. And I, I would say most of the time it does. I've had a lot more success in my classes in the last couple of years since I started playing that. So it's, it's a really nice kind of intro to the stay uh, before we even get the stay really involved or the free word really involved. Uh, yeah, so tricks, I mean, there's all sorts of stuff you can do for tricks, right? Um, the play dead is one thing, but can your dog play dead while you poke it, right? That's a, an added on thing that I've just actually started working with Scamp. Um, and instead of using free, I'm using clear, because then, you know, I've saved her life, um, which is kind of fun, isn't it? She's like, you shouldn't have killed me in the first place, mom. Huh? <laughs> um, so you can, do, you can do so many things with that, even like spin, um, and we're, we're not going to go very deep into freestyle or dancing with your dog, but all of these tricks kind of can lead to that, right? Can you put together a full performance? Uh, can you have a prop? Can you have, you know, so there's a lot you can do. It's really unending. Um, if your dog likes learning and really enjoys it, keep them going. It is great mental work. Huh? She says yes, uh, even though she sometimes thinks mental work is stupid and we should just hand her what she wants. She's a good girl. Yeah. Um, so that is tricks and the titles that Scamp has. Scamp has the first four titles under do more with your dog and she's very proud of them. We worked very hard to get those. Yeah, we did. So that is tricks. Now, See, there we go. I want to do some nose work. And nose work, uh, I will say nose work is my absolute favorite sport. Even though when I first heard about it, I thought it was the stupidest sounding thing I'd ever heard of. Why would we pay to play this game, right? And I've grown to absolutely love it. Um, your basics on this, if you know your drug dogs, right? Can we teach a dog to find a particular scent and alert to that scent? Um, we start with food in boxes. So the way we start, I will have just three, four boxes on the floor. It's like, yes, please, boxes. What are those boxes? 
right? I'll have a bunch of boxes on the floor and then I will have one box that is a food box. Um, and no other boxes on the floor will have food in them or will have had food in them. Um, keep in mind dog's smell is incredible. So if you put a cookie in this box over here, six months later, they will know that there was a cookie in it, what kind of cookie it was and potentially what brand if they've run into it before, right? Um, so they're very, very good on, on their sniffer. Um, I believe it's one drop of blood in an Olympic sized swimming pool and they can, they can find that. So that's, that's very, very uh, dilute, but very good at it. Huh. Um, and what's great is about 70% of their brain is actually geared towards olfactory or nose uh, and scent. So I use this in my training all the time. This is something that comes up in every fearful dog I work with. Yes. Um, and even if they're working on something completely different and they're not working on fear issues, sometimes I see them start nose work and they start to actually be able to make decisions on their own. And we'll, we'll kind of talk about that. So what I usually do is I put the food in the box and I have somebody hold my puppy back a little bit and it might be just a few feet, right? And I shake it, I'm like, there's food in this box. Stamp's like, yeah, there is, there's food in this box. <laughs> and I drop the box and let them find it, right? And as they get good at it, I wanna build up this drive. I want them like really pulling on that collar. I usually play on harness. I want them really yanking on it and going, give me the boxes. If they see a, a stack of cardboard boxes and they lose their brain, and they, all they can think about is getting there, then you know you're on the right track. Um, so if I send Scamp out a little bit, I meant to throw that further, there you go. Okay. I can start to hide it, can she find the proper box, right? As they get good at this, I'm gonna hide my dog. I'm gonna put them in another room. You can practice your stays like this. If you ask for a sit stay, leave the room, place your food box down, and then give them a cue. Um, you can use go, you can use find it, search, whatever you like, right? Um, so that's kind of how I, you start, right? My first class, I teach five week classes of just for fun. This is not geared towards competing at this point, but my first class, all we do is let the dogs see that box, drop it, and let them drive into it. And we're just building this a uh, frenzy of excitement to get to the box quick um, and building the speed and building the go, right? For my nervous kids, if they are not willing to eat out of a box, because I've run into that before, I might actually take a really big cardboard box like this, and it's really thin. This box is only three inches tall. Um, I would take the flaps off. Can I put their meal in there? And that's not yours, sir. You don't care. Go get it. Um, can I put their meal in there, right? Or can I put a bit of cheese or hamburger in there? And will they just play one box, keep it simple? Will you actually eat out of the cardboard box? Um, because I have had some dogs that won't. These are mostly my, my puppy mill breeder dogs that have been rescued after several years of living in a crate, that sort of thing. But I've, I've had some that are just, for whatever reason, we're anxious and we won't eat out of that box. So that is how I start. And then Scamp, like I said, is working on her second big title and she has a, uh, an element ribbon, which means she went in and did four interior searches. So that, our trial that day, we were in a school. Um, and so you go in one at a time, one dog at a time, and they have either a classroom, one was a bathroom, one of them we did in a gym. Um, just a locker room and they hide. I know I got to put you away before I open this or you'll go nutty. Um, they hide a little tin with Q-tips and the dog has to find it. So I'm going to put Scamp away real quick so that she doesn't see where I'm putting it. Come on. Good girl. Go to your room. Go to your room, child. Go. Thank you. She's not happy. Uh, she will be in a moment though. So I have well, that won't work. just some tins. I'll show them to you. They've got <laughs> holes in the top 
and there are three Q-tips. This one is scented with birch essential oil, and I'm going to take it and put it right on the leg of this table right here. So depending on where you place it, this is the puzzle for her. Um, she's short, so that helps. It is somewhat chilly in my basement, so that's where we're at right now. So the air falls, right? Hot air rises, same thing with scent. So all of this scent, it's gonna plume out, usually in the basement, it falls a little bit just because it's a little chilly. So it's gonna pool down the leg here, it's gonna come up, it's gonna sit under this table, and she's going to not only have to figure out where in the room it is, but where on the table this thing's at. Right, so it's um, can be complicated, although I'm hoping she'll make it look really easy for you. I'm gonna turn you so you can see her main search area there. All right, and when she finds it, I am going to treat her like crazy. Exactly, I hear you, baby. All right, let me go grab her. Come on up. Good girl, come here, come here. We're gonna pick those up. That's not what you're finding. I've got her search. She's gonna run around the room. Let me see if I can follow her with the camera here. There we go. Yes, good girl. See, and she makes it look nice and easy. So that she's not looking for the tin. Um, I, I've hidden it in places she clearly can't see it. She's definitely not looking for the tin. She is going in smelling that and following the air right to it. So that's a good, it's a fairly common placement for us, not in the basement, but just when we're playing in general for it to be on the leg of the table. I know it is, isn't it? It's a bit. I'll pick that up. That's it. Okay. So as they play it, you get um, in her level, the first level you have one hide at all times. In her level, she can have one, two, or three hides in the same room. And they are usually different uh, odors. She has three odors she can find. Here we go. Good girl, come back. Come sit down. Um, so that is part of nose work. It's, it's a huge sport, but that is part of it. Um, we trial in NACSW, which is the National Canine Scent Work Association. I think I got that right and, and everything. Um, and that venue, I love it because it's it takes a lot to get to each level. Some of the other venues you can do AKC, uh, UKC, CWAGS is a great one with games, um, which I think is the Canine Association of Work. I don't know, it's something along those lines. Um, but they have a lot of great games uh, that they play in their trials. So we have fun with it. We love trialing for it. And I will say she, we dealt with the reactivity issue. We trained for maybe three years on the reactive side and her marking and lunging at other dogs on leash. We got to a point where I was 75% confident with her pretty much anywhere. I could take her to dog events if I was being very vigilant. Um, I could take her to parks, I'd walk her down the block. I felt really confident with her, but we still had that little, little bit that I was blaming on genetics. Um, I'm still gonna blame a little bit on her genetic sassy attitude. Uh, but when we started playing nose work because of the critical thinking and the independence involved, I can't help her. If I don't know where it's at, I can't. I'm out. I got nothing. So as she learned to play that game, I noticed within, even within six months of us really starting to play it, um, even before we started odor and we were still on food, her reactivity troubles, I felt 95% confident up, up from 75%. So it, we still have the occasional reactive snip, and usually it's when I'm not paying attention and I leave her into a bad situation, right? Um, but she, as long as we're working together, she is solid. And I, I put a lot of that on what we've done with nose work stuff. So that's, uh, 
that's my key on nose works. It, it really, I've used it for fearful dogs. Um, my boy Rocky, uh, my foster, and he's had a lot of fear issues. He plays it regularly and loves it. Um, Jake, Jake actually one day was afraid that Jake is my boy I'm keeping. He's 16 months old and he's kind of in that. Um, he's not very bright. Uh, he's very, very bright. His brain is currently not in his head. That's, that's the issue. He's an adolescent testosterone filled monster. Um, but he's working on it. He one day was mortified to come into my bathroom and he usually comes in every morning because what dog doesn't want to go to the bathroom with their owner, right? And he comes in every morning and for a full week, he wouldn't come in. And I realized on like day two, it was a shampoo bottle got placed in the wrong spot. Wasn't normal. And it freaked him out because he's a sensitive guy. And I let it go for a week and I'm like, you'll get over it. Wouldn't get over it. Wouldn't get over it. Okay. So he was already playing nose work at the time. He had the basics. So I played it in the hallway outside the bathroom. I then hit him one more time and put the food box in the bathroom, just inside the threshold of the bathroom. It just had to stick his head in there. And then I hit him one more time and I put all the boxes in the bathroom and put his box deeper in the bathroom. And he never had trouble again. Um, and I was able to remove that weird shampoo bottle. I, I left it for a few more days to make sure he was good. And then, you know, it was a bravery game for us. So you can use this for, for a lot of specific fears. You can also use it for just general anxiety. Can we build up some confidence? So any questions on nose work? Would that work to help them distract from loud noises such as fireworks? Yes. So 4th of July, I had a large amount of things um, planned just in case. We had CBD oil involved, uh, which just took the edge off the fear. We had marrow bones for them to chew. They were going at it. Um, but I think one of the, the bigger things that helped because they already know the game, right? If I try and play it, if I try and start them on nose work with the fireworks, that's not going to work. But Jake wouldn't leave the, the house because he just was mortified by these booms. Um, he handled them and then the third hit and he'd had enough. And when they got louder, he was done. And he just hid in the house most of the night. And to get an outlet for energy, I played it inside, right? But I also, I did try and it worked very well. I opened the door up and I let him play inside, but our sliding glass door was open so he could hear it. Um, and he played through it. So it was really good test for me to see, are you willing to play through that? Um, and it was a nice outlet for him because he was clearly not going on his walk. Um, that would have been too much. So I do, I use it for, for kind of a nice energy outlet. Um, I do not do snow. I do not do cold. I do not do winter. I should probably move to Arizona, but, um, we're stuck here, aren't we, Scamp? Uh, the Scamp would hate Arizona because of the heat. So, but in the winter, if I don't want to take the dogs on a long walk, we might go on a shorter jaunt that I can handle. And then we're going to play a bunch of nose work and that's going to get a lot of that mental energy out. So you can, you can do a lot with it. And it doesn't even matter if you ever go to odor, um, you can play it with food and it's just as effective. So I, then you don't have to worry about what you're touching. Now that I've touched that to pretty much everything in this room that I'm touching is infected with odor now. Um, so Jake, who's new to the sport, new to odor, won't be allowed in my basement for a bit. Um, and that's just, just, so playing with food, you don't have to worry about the odor sensitivity when you start. Scamp can handle it because she's been playing it for, she's been on odor for a couple of years now. So she's good at it. So yeah, nose work, nose work is probably my go-to for most things. I, it is, even my hyper dogs, a lot of people, well, that's not going to get the energy out of a hyper dog. Um, it will get a lot of the mental energy taken care of, even if they still need the exercise for the physical. And if I have a pile of boxes in here and my dog can't calm down enough to settle down and search, all they're doing is racing around and spreading that scent everywhere and making the puzzle harder on themselves. So as soon as they do settle down, they get rewarded, right? And so it, it actually is a great game for my nuthead puppies to learn, wait a second, I should enter the room and search 
with my head on my shoulders instead of losing it and going crazy and then finding it. Maybe we should find it first. Do some work and then you can go nuts. So it's uh, it can teach kind of both the fear and the nut heads. So any other questions on that? Yes, again, feel free to unmute if you have questions. I feel like you're speaking to me, Kelly. Is there anybody else uh, in this with other than us three? We do have another member. <laughs> okay, Hello. good. Hi. I'll say if you um, don't have questions, that's fine. We're just making make no, sure that everyone has an opportunity. I just wanted, I, I'm trying to assimilate all this and trying to figure out how to use it in yeah. our situation. Um, but I think a lot of what you're saying, too, is the age of the dog has something to do with it. Um, Two-year-old dogs don't have the ability of an eight-year-old dog? It is true to a point because, yeah, Scamp has matured a lot, right? Um, right. But a lot of her maturing also and a lot of the way I work with, like, Jake right now, again, he's a, he's a testosterone brain-filled, I mean, I'm sure his brain is like soup right now. Um, he can't listen to a darn thing that I try and ask him to do. And he, at one point, he knew heal. He knew all the things. He was great. Um, and then adolescence kicked in. And if you've raised kids, I think you know about that. Um, if I try and do hard stuff with him that matters to me, like his heels and his stays and things that we're really going to use. Come here. You don't need that. Come here. Um, it frustrates us both. But if I can do tricks, right now he's actually learning the play dead and clear trick that Scamp played um, because I don't, that's not life-saving. If he goes several years and then he doesn't remember that one, I don't care, right? So some of your sports work and your trick stuff can help you teach your dog to train even if they're having a hard time learning the hard things that we want them to learn, right? Um, nose work. Any dog can do. I mean, I've started, at, we've done it. Jake was eight weeks old when he did his first little pile of boxes and I put the food in um, and he had a great time with it. So it's just, what can I expect from my dog at different ages, right? Not so much, um, well, you're, you're too young, you'll mature later and then we'll work on it. Work on the things they can handle. Like um, nose work is, is so good and geared for all ages. I've, I've, again, Jake played at eight weeks. My old man, Jasper, who passed um, almost two years ago now, his very last night, I didn't know it was coming, but his very last night, he was gimping around the house, blind, deaf, senile, and he was going to find his food box, and darn it all, he did. Um, and so you can play this. I, I played it with Jessie, who is not mobile. I had to lift her rear end with a butt harness, and she, her front end was good, and she took me to the box. You know, So you can play this. You can definitely play this with all ages um, and all the other sports as well, although maturity does help for the learning and remembering of things for sure. So... Yeah, and okay, you guys yeah. have two at the moment, if I'm correct on that. Yeah. So most of my nose work stuff, even if my dogs get along well and I'm not worried about resource guarding, I play it separately um, because I don't want to worry about the nose, the uh, resource guarding, right? I don't want to worry that one puppy decides it's really exciting to play in these boxes and starts pushing the other one out, right? Um and I want to make sure this is also a really good way to bond with an individual dog, especially when you've got two and they're litter mates. It's hard to, to separate sometimes. So it's, this is a great way the sports and such are a great way to kind of do that as well. That's true. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is most of what I've got. Um, there are sports galore. The ones we talked about tonight, your urban agility or parkour, your tricks and your nose work. Those are the easiest ones to kind of play at home. Um, but rally is a heel work sport. That one's great fun. Scamp has a decent time with rally. She actually really likes rally free better, which is rally plus freestyle, which is dancing. Um, she likes rally free. I tend to fall over when we play rally free because the human is spinning as well. But it's a fun sport. We have a great time with it. Um, 
there's other things. There's barn hunt, which you need to go to a facility that offers for you can't. It involves live rats. The rats stay alive, so that's key. Um, war coursing, which is another one, you have to actually find a place to do it. Um, dock diving, unless you've got a lake with a dock, you have to actually find a place to do it. But can your dog jump off a dock? Uh, Scamp says no, she cannot do that. So if you were wondering, Scamp will not be dock diving anytime soon. Um, she likes kayaking, but she doesn't like jumping off. So, uh, but yeah, you, there's so many sports out there that we don't realize. Um, there's some that I'm just hearing about. Really, people play that, um, and it's it's a lot of fun. So I am more than happy to send info out. Um, I know you've got this recorded, which is great. Um, but if you wanted more info on any particular thing, I'm happy to, to chat with you. Uh, if you want to do trick titles, my boss is cleared to do judging on that and you just have to send videos so you don't have to get together, which is good if you're up in Michigan, right? Um, yeah. So there's, there's dog sports and how you can use it, right? <laughs> yes, there's, I learn about a lot of different dog sports mostly through you Mindy so it's like yeah. there are more every day and uh, indeed if someone has any questions about how to get in contact with these you can always ask me and I can grab Mindy's information and we can go from there um, but also if you just have some fun jog stories you need to share in this last little part of the program I'm sure that's, that's always good. welcome um I don't have dogs personally right now. I have two cats. Um, I don't expect them to do any nose work, but I can I use it have with um, cats do some nose work. I have. also, there is an airport, I believe in Australia, that has hired a llama, a drug llama. Uh, <laughs> so you can do nose work with many different animals. Oh. I saw that and decided I needed a llama. I don't. I don't have one yet. I have a feeling that won't be happening for quite You have room time. in your backyard. Just got to depend on what the rules are at the neighborhood, right? Well, see, that's what I said. And of course, you know, living with my mom, she's like, no, you're not getting a llama. <laughs> really? Buzzkill? <laughs> um, so, yeah, we don't have a llama yet, but, you know, we'll work on it. We'll work on it. So, yeah, it's, it's amazing, actually, how many different species and how you can get cats involved in training. Yeah. I know cats that do tricks. Uh, mine doesn't, but you, Kelly's met Ariel. You, you don't want to stick your hand too close to her, um, with food or without. Uh, <laughs> Ernie, actually, my, my younger cat, he knows a hand target. He will lure. Um, so he'll sit and he'll up. We haven't done anything else, but he's a, he's a good guy. So. But then teaching a cat how to get down, that is the biggest thing. They can go up, yes. but not down. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Not down, yes. <laughs> that usually involves throwing a cookie on the floor. Um, yeah, Ernie Ernie still, he jumps on the counter to get a cookie. And you know what? I've decided that that's acceptable. You go for it, buddy. I, I don't care. It's um, not worth it. Um, other than the organizations that you mentioned earlier tonight, is there any online resources or specific books by particular trainers out there that you would recommend people look into if they're getting extra info? Yeah, um, I know, and I tend to not participate in the AKC um, stuff myself, and it's more, I have a, a slight grudge against the AKC, uh, which isn't necessarily their fault. Um, but I know, like, trainers I work with, Pam actually does a lot of AKC stuff as well, um, and the AKC has a all sorts of sports on there. Some of them I haven't heard of. There's titles for how your dog behaves in a farm setting. There's uh, there's titles galore, um, which is kind of fun. And it just encourages people to train, um, which is great. So the AKC can be a great place to jump to. Do more with your dog. I mentioned it with tricks, but they actually have other things as well. Um, I know they have a fitness title. And there, I'm always hearing about them starting to come out with more things. So do more with your dog is kind of my go-to. Um, if you type in dog sports in Michigan, you're going to probably pile on a whole bunch of stuff. So yeah, there, there's a lot of, of resources out there. Um, and our 
we have a, a fairly active Facebook page. It's Enjoy Your Dog. Um, so if you were to follow that, you can see some of what we post. Um, a lot of it's Chicago Land based. Yeah. Yeah, right? We have some fun stuff on there. Sometimes yeah, I just like watching the different doggies and I get updated yeah. with scamps, gets more, mil more, more ribbons and medals. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. To stay updated on scamps ribbons, you should definitely follow just, Enjoy Your Dog. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes, you are a quick girl, huh? Yeah, so there, there's resources galore. There are books, but honestly, um, in the last few years, people aren't coming out with as many books, so things aren't as up-to-date in book form. Still not a bad place to go, but they're doing a lot more webinars, seminars, videos. Um, YouTube can be a, a decent place to find videos as well, so... Yeah, there's there's a lot of places you can you can go with it. And then just practice is the key, practice. right? <laughs> practice. Practice. Yes. And if it's not working, keep in mind there are you know 50 different ways to train each thing. Um, if you put 10 trainers in a room and ask them how to teach a sit, we'll all probably have something different about it. So if it's not working even just contact up another trainer. I have actually done Zoom training sessions like we're doing right now or FaceTime, one of the two. Um, and said, hey, contact us. I'm more than happy to do a, a private session on, hey, well, we were trying this and it's not working. What do we do? Um, and kind of talk them through that. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of different ways to teach all of this. Um, in fact, SCAMP, I tried like the most, the two or three most popular ways to teach a backup uh, and Scamp would not back up. This dog would not back up for, for three years or so. And then finally, I tried, come here, I know the treats are up there. Yeah. I tried the foot targeting where she's just, she's backing up onto something. She learned how to back up a staircase before she learned to back up on the flat because for whatever reason, in her mind, it was easier. So it's um, when I'm teaching my sports classes, especially like my urban agility, my parkour class, I really have to, this is how we normally train it. And I look around and if something's not working for somebody, we switch to something else uh, or a different way to get to the same point. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of ways you, you can do different things. Come here, you are saucy. Yeah. Scamp is saying she hasn't been the center of attention in a long time. I know. Well, and I put her cookie bin up on top of the, so she's, she's oh. <laughs> for better or for worse, she's very good at using her nose now that she competes in nose work. <laughs> and she knows exactly where I put everything. Hey, look at that. She's also just a vocal dog, so she'll, she'll bark just for fun. But yeah, we, we've all had dogs like that. Yes. She's just, she's a vocal girl, so. She, um, she's not as barky anymore when I'm training, if we're training somewhere else. So if I take her to the park for a training session, but she hasn't done that many uh, in the basement with me where I'm actually talking to somebody else. So she, yeah, usually this is me and her time. And she's like, wait a second. Why are you talking on the phone so much? This isn't right. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So. Well, we are... Oh, like 15 minutes early on time, but that's okay. We just right. had fewer questions than I was expecting. Yeah, Unless, does okay. our audience have any final questions? Um, no, I think it's just going to take some practice. Lots and lots of practice. <laughs> well, yes, just knowing but... that some of this nose work stuff would be good for just like exercising their brain. Just like us when we like to read or do puzzles, you know, it's helpful mm -hmm. for us. Yeah. So. Yeah. Getting them something to do. Maybe it'll help them sleep longer. Yes. Oh, we've, we've, yep, we're working on that. Yes. <laughs> I, I will actually say Jake and Scamp go to a competition nose work class once a week. And in your competition classes, um, and even in my, my for fun classes, um, the dogs are crated unless they're working. So in, say, an hour long class, they might be out of their crate for five to 10 minutes, depending on how, and that, that's, so they're, they're actively searching for maybe five minutes or so of that hour. And boy, do they go home and sleep. Um, and it's, it's just, it, 
just thrills me uh, that it takes just that extra mental energy and they just, yeah, they go home, they take a nap. Now, Scampsy, EJ still, he'll take a quick nap and then he's up again, but that's just his age Hobby. Um, and energy level. Scamp is a, she's always been a lazy little, little lumper. Um, but yeah, it's fun to, so that I use it for, for an energy outlet a lot. It's fantastic for that. Huh. Wonderful. Well, just to end off the recording, I'm just going to say thank you for joining us. I'm please stick around after I hit stop recording so I can thank you again too. So like, thank you, Mandy. Thanks for joining us for the dogs, tricks, and sports.